All right, so in this example, we're going to calculate the error in using the trapezoid and Simpson's rule using six, um, well, trapezoids for the trapezoidal rule. Um, and so if we wanted to do this, there are a couple of formulas that are provided for us in our notes. So the first one is the error in the trapezoidal um, with n intervals is going to be less than or equal to the m times b minus a cubed times 12 n squared. And don't forget that this m is the maximum value of the absolute value of the um, second derivative. And there's a couple of ways that we can do that. Um, for Simpson's rule with n intervals, this m is a little different and it's going to still be the maximum value of the fourth derivative. So the maximum value on a closed interval here, which is negative one to three, and um, means that the maximum will have to be either y values at the critical points and evaluating the end point at the function at the endpoints, right? So we just need to either this either these y values at negative one or three will be the largest, or all of the critical numbers evaluated of uh, evaluated the function for f, and then whatever that largest value is out of all of those critical numbers. So if we can only remember the, ex the extreme value theorem, where it just says that if you're on a closed interval and you want to find local extrema, you would just have to find critical numbers and find the largest y value out of those and then evaluate at the endpoints. And out of all of those, the largest. So out of all of those, the largest would be the maximum. But in this case, because we have a cosine function, it does get a little bit more complicated. So um, we're going to start with the trapezoid, um, and then we'll go ahead and go into Simpson's rule. So the first thing we want to do with the trapezoid is notice that we will need the fourth derivative. So here, um, we can go ahead and start with the second and the fourth derivative for these errors. So if f of x is going to be defined as cosine of 4x, the integrand function, this means the first derivative evaluated at x would just be negative 4 sine 4x, right? The derivative of cosine is negative sine and then the chain rule. The second derivative of f is going to be negative 16 cosine of 4x. And then the third derivative, which we will be using again in the Simpson's error part, will be negative 64, I'm sorry, positive 64 sine 4x. And then the fourth derivative with respect to x would just be 256 and then cosine 4x. So we have all of them. The ones that were going to be most important to us will be the second derivative and this fourth derivative as they lie right here. Okay, so now that we have everything that we need, um, and also we can identify the other parameters, we can see that a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to 3, um, n is provided for us to be six intervals. Right, so I think we're, we can go ahead and just begin the process. So um, for the error in T sub n, it's going to be less than or equal to B minus A cubed over 12 n squared times, and I'm going to rewrite this as the maximum value over the interval of the second derivative. 
So that way we can get this to be 3 minus a negative 1 cubed over 12 times 6 squared times the maximum of the second derivative function of x. So um, this obviously is the easy part here, right? But this part we're going to go ahead and take a look at a graph. Now, algebraically, we could take the derivative of that and set it equal to zero by critical numbers and test them. But because, again, this function we can see is periodic, maybe a graph would do better. So let's go ahead. And again, we're not looking for any negative values. We're just looking for um, absolute value. So we're just, again, looking at all the critical numbers, endpoints, and whatever that has the largest y value, that's the one that we take. So back here, I do have this graph right here, as you can see. And here are all of that. Here is the highest points, right? The um, amplitude is 16. And then down here, you can see that there is, um, let me go like this. There we go. <laughs> you can see now that they have negative 16 as the y value. But you'll notice that um, the absolute value of that would be 16, right? So on our interval, we have our interval from negative 1 to 3, right? Negative 1 to 3. So at negative 1, the endpoint here, we can see the y value is about 10, right? Absolute value 10 is 10. And then it gets higher at 16, right? And if I check the other endpoint, which is 3, I notice that that is about negative 13 and the absolute value of negative 13 is 13, which is still not as big and large as these critical number y here. So the critical numbers here are 3 pi over 4, pi over 2, pi over 4. And then I would plug and chug them into the function and notice that 16 is the y value. So out of 6, out of all these critical numbers, And then this one is 3, so negative 13, and then the endpoint's thir about 10, right? So out of 10 and negative 13, absolute values would be 9 and 13, respectively, which is still not as large as these y values on the critical numbers. Therefore, the maximum of the second derivative and absolute value is 16, So now if we come back to our thing, we will see that this maximum value here is 16. Now, of course, another way, again, I want to note that you could just take the third derivative, right, set it equal to zero and find critical numbers. All right, so here we go. So um, you can, this is just three plus four. So four cubed over 12 times 36 times 16. And you can go ahead and put this in the calculator. And, um, and we have a calculator open, so that might be fun to do. So we'll go ahead and put um, four cubed um, divided by, 12 times 36 and then times 16. And then of course right here, I love Desmos, it gives you the option for um, a fraction, so 64 27 or approximately 2.370. Usually, if it's an irrational uh, number form, we leave it. We don't. It's usually only if it's irrational, we tend to not want to use the fraction. So we can see for that first part that here, this is correct. All right. So essentially, again, all you want to do is, I, and I encourage you to check the all the critical numbers and the endpoints, whichever gives you the absolute value of the largest, then that's the one that you would use for that maximum. So knowing this now, let's go ahead and 
Um, do the Simpsons rule. So now the error for in this case would be um, in Simpsons rule S sub 6 is less than or equal to B minus A now to the fifth power over 180 times N, which they gave us to be six intervals to the fourth power times. And then I'm going to write this as the maximum of the fourth derivative value. And luckily we already did most of this work. So this is just going to be equal to, again, 3 minus a negative 1 to the 5th over 180 times 6 to the 4th times. And now what we're left with is now to find this. So let's go ahead and graph this. And again, another way we could be doing this is taking the 5th derivative and setting it equal to 0 and then um, find all the critical numbers and then test them, right? And then see which one is the largest and then look at the endpoints. So if we go back to Desmos, notice that I have it right here as the second um, function. So let me go ahead and turn this off. Okay, and let's go ahead and turn this on. So now we can see the y-axis is representing um, that fourth derivative function that we can see from over here, right, this one here. And so right now we can see the critical numbers between negative 1 and 3 are going to be here, 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 here. And then we can see that at negative 1, this value is close to negative 1, right? The y value is neg about negative 150. Absolute value of negative 150 is 150, which we can see is not nearly as large as the critical number's y values here at 256. Let's check 3. So at the end point 3, we go up here and we see it's about 210. Absolute value of 210 is 210, which is still not nearly as close as the y values of these critical numbers. Extreme values theorem says if you take the, all the y values of critical numbers and the endpoints on a closed interval, the largest one would be the maximum, the absolute maximum. So we can see here that because at the end, the y values at the endpoints, after I evaluate the absolute value, they're not as large as the y value at the critical numbers, which are all 256. Even down here, even if it's negative, absolute value of negative 256 is 256. So we know and have verified that the maximum value here is 256. Now, sometimes it, it depends on what type of function you have, but just be careful. It's not always going to be the case. So we always just like to graph. I think it's a little quicker to graph as well, um, if possible. Okay, so here we're going to have now um, 3 plus 4, which is um, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 to the 5th all over 180 times 64, which I'm not going to do in my head at all. I'm going to do all of this. <laughs> on the calculator. So let's go back to Desmos and I'll go here and we'll have four to the fifth divided by parentheses um, 180 times times n which is six and then to the fourth power and then times 256, that amplitude. So if I went ahead and looked at a fraction, it would be um, 4096 all over 3645. So it is a rational number, so we usually leave it like that. But of course, we can always use the um, decimal representation. And then it specifically says four decimal places, so I'll do one, two, three, seven. And if I come back here um, and I scroll a little up, I can see that that definitely is correct. 